Well, thanks everybody for coming out on a beautiful August day in summertime. We tried to figure out how to do this outside, but we just couldn't pull it off. So, uh, so happy that you're here. We're going to talk about uh, uh, the strategy of social media today. And the reason we're doing this is that there's huge demand. People really want to know about this. And so that's, that's one of the reasons we're doing it. The other is we wanted to take a strategic view because there's a lot of things out there. I mean, every day, I don't know about you, you get emails, but learn about Facebook, and all kinds of things. And, and they're pretty tactical. So we wanted to take a strategic view, and that's sort of what I do with strategy. And the third thing is, this is an overwhelming subject. I mean, this is just a few, a sample of some of the social media companies out there. Now, I'm sure that you know you know all of these, but so so what happens to a lot of us in our organizations is someone will say something like very strategic, like you know we should be on Facebook, or maybe a board member or someone else will say, are we tweeting? Why are we tweeting? Well. These are interesting things, but it's not necessarily strategic. So we want to look a little more strategically at these things. Now, because of the overwhelming nature of this, many of us feel like this. Anybody feel like this that it's just impossible to keep up with this stuff? So what we want to do today is maybe just give you a little hand to get out of the quicksand. Now, um, I don't consider myself an expert in this. This isn't what I do all the time. I'm not some consultant that was brought in. I'm, I'm a partner at SV2. We're all in this together. So I would like to take a, a social media approach to today, and that is crowdsourcing. We have some really amazing people in here. I have some backgrounds, incredible experience with more than I do with some, some of these technologies. In fact, if anybody, I don't even use Facebook, and we'll, we'll see why. And, in, and I tweeted this morning just to see if anybody noticed. Did anybody look? I thought somebody may look and say, this kind of thing, so I tweeted. And, and my tweet was, going to a, a social media workshop today. And I also went on my blog and stuff, so at least I updated it. Now, I do use LinkedIn pretty well. So, so we're going to talk about why, why strategically we do that. Now, who are our helpers here? We have some amazing marketing people that can help us later on. If you're, yeah. if you're a helper, any one of these people can come up here and do this. So oh, I'm so we're, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, by the way, we'll we, you know, I, I'm one of you. I'm a partner, so this should be fun. If fun's okay. I mean, on a summer afternoon, we should have a little bit of fun. Um, we also have our who's, how are the SP two partners who many of them know about? Raise your hands. If you're a partner, yes, if you're a partner. And then everybody who's doing this on a daily basis. So I think together we have expertise. Is that fair? So this is interactive. Please, if you see something, you have a question, you disagree with something, you know, it's, it's our meeting. Now, this is kind of hard to read, but I'll give you the gist of this. Anybody ever hear of Charlene Lee? Anybody know Charlene Lee? Yeah. So Charlene Lee, I think, is probably the leading person in this space. She was an analyst for Forrester, and now she has her own company called Altimeter Group, and she's, she's amazing. I used to have a podcast, so I interviewed her, gosh, back in 2007, um, when she was one of the first people covering this space. And I said to her, how do you possibly keep up with all this stuff? And she said, well, I don't. I only keep up with the things that my clients care about. And that's the bottom line. You don't have to know that big chart of everything. You just have to know the audience you're trying to reach and what you want to say to them and the best way to do it. Right? So this quote, uh, this is actually, this is so old that she called it social computing. I guess that was the term right after Web 2.0. I'm not quite sure. But I think, I think the most important thing we do, we look at these things as a list. We need a Facebook page. We need to be on Twitter. We need to be, you know, okay, why? What, why? And I love what she said here. A more coherent approach is to start with your target audience and determine what kind of relationship you want to build with them based on what they're ready for. Ready for is an interesting thing because they may ultimately be ready for Facebook, but they may not be now. Right? So... To show you how committed I was to this event, I went to a social media meeting from Silicon Valley Forum on Monday just to make sure we were on the right track. And this guy, Kelly, it's not, and you could tell I took that picture with my iPhone. Now, my wife, anybody that knows me, our family, my wife is a photographer, and I've just proved this. So I, I was in, I think, about the fourth row. There were 100 people there. And for you, 
I embarrassed myself and I said, <laughs> so what if you're a small nonprofit? What would you do for strategy for social media? And he looked at me, he was a great guy, and he said, you want free consulting? I said, yes, but you'll be helping change the world. And so he answered the question. And so I felt really good because we were on track. I thought if he said something else, I would have had to redo the whole thing we were going to do. And he said, the, the, the question I always ask is why? Why are you doing it? So he said, when I meet a, a client, and I said, do you have a Facebook page? And they say, yes. He says, why? And often it'll be some of the reasons we talk about. Well, um, our competitors have it, or we thought it'd be really cool to have one, or one of our, our boss said we should have one. Well, those really aren't strategic reasons. What he talked about then was a strategic reason is to engage your community. So that means a lot of things, but your community is basically the audience you're trying to reach, right? Now, engage means a lot of things, and Holly and I even talked about how SV2 uses it. So engage could mean you want donations. Engage could mean you want likes. It could mean you want them to pass information on to somebody else. There may be various objectives in terms of what you want to do. So the why question is really, what are your objectives for social media? Okay? By the way, interrupt at any time. Um, so the strategy questions are why, why are you doing this, what are your objectives, who, who are you trying to reach, who's the audience you're trying to reach. If your audience isn't on Facebook, why would you want a Facebook page? And, and I think back to sort of the why, this has to fit in your overall strategy. If social media doesn't fit in your strategy, it doesn't make sense to do it. The what is, what are you going to say? What kind of relationship are you going to start? What's the message you're going to deliver? Because you could have a great page, it's very entertaining, but if it doesn't deliver an effective message, um, you know, it's not going to get any results. And then you get to the how which is, are we going to do videos? Are we going to do blogs? Um, are we going to use Facebook? And, and the how sometimes is, what does your audience want to see? But it's also, what can we pull off? Like if I were the, the videographers here, I would probably use video whenever I did. I happen to like uh, podcasts, so I do podcasts. Maybe somebody's a great writer in your organization. So, so that's some of what you have to look at. And there's also the, the, the who is also, who's going to do it? Okay, so, and we'll get into this a little later. So you have, yeah, yeah that's a big question. So it's, it's great you put up a Facebook page. Well, you better put some content. And you better update it, and you better monitor it. And so what we've done is we've taken these, and we've made them into seven questions, and we've created something you'll see later. And I've never done this before. It's a little experimental, but this is called the Social Media Strategy Canvas. And it's sort of a summary sheet that as we go through this workshop, we can put some of our ideas. Now, we understand that not everybody in here is the strategist for your organization. Some people are here because they're the ones when they said we need a Facebook page, and you're going to do it, right? Um, but there are some people with strategy. But what we wanted to do is give you a start on your strategy and give you a place to really, to really put the strategy. But we'll get into this in the workshop portion. So... Just a second about the book. Um, it's not a promo for the book, but the reason we wrote it. So I moved back to the Midwest after being in Silicon Valley about 10 years, and I started teaching, and I found there was quite a gap between what was going on there and what was going on here. And so we thought, we really need something for the students, and we called it marketing and technology because <coughs> social media wasn't even the term then. So we created this class. It was really successful. My co-author, who's now the dean at the Bill Greedy School of Business, Tanuja Singh, and I decided that it would be a, book, a decent book. And so we, we put the book together. And at the time, it was actually released in uh, 2009. So we called it Surfing the Rift. Actually, that was one of those terms that we came up with. We thought we'd come up with something better, and we never did. Now, how many of you know in the song, Hey Jude, the, the line, the movement you need is on your shoulder, was a throwaway line? Anybody know that? Paul McCartney had that in the song. The way McCartney writes songs is he would you know, kind of get the melody and then put words in it. So he showed it to Lennon and he said, you know, I need, a, I need something to replace this. And Lennon said, keep it in. It's really good. That's kind of what happened with the title. Um, but the idea really is that there are opportunities, we call them riffs, that arise that give marketers a chance to really get competitive advantage or get to a marketplace. We see social media that way. And, and they change. 
So some of the opportunities come up, and maybe they're on MySpace, and maybe you know. So mm -hmm. so it's so you got to be really quick, and you got to be aware of what's going on. Okay. Now, we call it participant media, and the reason is all of these social media technologies are participant, right? What would YouTube be like if nobody uploads a video? Wouldn't be very fun. What about um, what about Facebook without any profiles or updates? Twitter without anybody tweeting. So the whole concept is participation by the audience. They own it. Now, there's another level of participation, the participation you want from your audience. So one level is you have a blog, and somebody reads your blog. Next level is they comment on your blog. Another one may be they post a video. Another level is they may create their own blog. And in fact, it even gets worse than that. And this is something Kelly pointed out in his presentation is people create Facebook pages, they create Twitter accounts for other brands, and it's not even them. And they'll have hundreds and thousands of people who are looking at the brand, thinking it's this other brand, who may or may not even be on Twitter. So you gotta be really diligent about it. You may, you may think you don't have anything out there on social media, but you do, somewhere. So, so, that, so that's the participant part. And it is definitely participant. Now, one of the things is you, you might lose your message a little bit. You can't control it like the old days. So we're going to talk really briefly about the world we're in today. It's always on. It's mobile. Mobile technology is becoming really dominant. 50% uh, of all internet traffic is now mobile. Wow. Yeah, and it's getting it. I think the iPad, last time I looked at 1% of all internet traffic. It's on demand. People want the information immediately. It's controlled by the users, as we said. It's global. Once you put it out there, it's everywhere. And there's some generational differences. Now, this is a pretty interesting crowd because I think we have people from different generations. I'm going to make an admission here. I'm a baby boomer. I was born in 1958. I know. I'm sorry, but I was. And this is the world I was born into, in the communication world. We had one TV. We, you know, you watch the same show as your parents. I was great if Gilligan's Island was on, but you know, Lawrence Welk. Anybody? How many people are baby boomers that kind of remember this? If Lawrence Welk. That wasn't fun. Uh, the bottom one is a personal computer in the seventies that we used to send instead of emails, letters. We, you know, we used newspapers. Uh, instant messaging was a telephone. Anybody know the thing in the middle? Baby boomers can't answer. That's a nineteen sixties iPod. It's a transistor radio. Oh. It was very cool when that came around. So you contrast that to the world that my son, for example, who's 19, grew up in. He grew up in a world where he's always connected, always on. He's always, you know, it'll be funny. We'll say, hey, you coming over? Maybe. Because I know what he's doing. He's weighing his options. He's got three options. <laughs> it's true. And he's saying, he doesn't come out and say it. If something better comes along, I'm not coming over. But that's what he's doing. Because he's always connected with people. And so that's not my generation. If I say, hey, would you, yeah, we'll be over at 5. And we're there at 5.15, fashionably late. And that's the way it works. So, so it's not that either one's bad or good. It's just the way you grew up. And I'll give you a real quick example of this. And this is very important strategically. Because strategically, you got who is the audience you're trying to reach? How do they communicate? So I was coaching this team of students. And we were working on a project for, I think it was McDonald's or something. Uh, and so I get this text on a Friday night. This is when I was in Illinois. I didn't get that many texts back then. And it said, things don't look good. It was for my assistant coach. And he's in his early 20s. Great guy, real smart guy. But, oh my God, something's wrong with the team. I pick up the telephone. Danny, what's wrong? Cubs are losing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, so uh, how's the team doing? Oh, they're fine. Okay. So there's the two worlds. I'm just part of his universe. He assumes I'm watching the Cubs game. And, you know, he just sends it out to me. I get it. I panic. I pick up the phone. Because that's my mode of transport. Yeah, transport my mode of, of communication. And many of us are like that. We, we were racing. Now, that doesn't mean we're not learning how to use these technologies. And we're not embracing them. And we don't see the value in them. But it's, it's you know, it's a little bit of an adjustment. Would anybody kind of agree with that? Then? Yeah. So, on the other hand, we have to be more patient with, that used to drive me crazy when my son did that. But then I found a lot of people were like that, that 
well, let's keep it open, you know, let's see. I said, okay, this isn't just him. This is, now, anybody agree with that? It's, oh, yeah. Okay. So, so the generational aspect of this is very important strategically. Let's take a look at the state of social media. I'm going to play you a little video, I hope. Now, to confirm that I am a baby boomer, <laughs> I'll put my glasses on. And Holly may have to come up here and save me. You got it. We don't really need the music down. Let's turn the music down. More than that now. So that just gives you some of the numbers. Um, there are um, there's, a, there's another one I liked, but it was kind of loud and longer. And um, these are always interesting because in a hurry you can see the numbers. The numbers are incredible. So this is from a Pew Trust um, sample. And by the way, we have a little handout that has some books and some and, and this this um, URLs on there. What we're going to do, Holly, I think we talked a little bit about this, is we're going to start a page of websites. You know, I had some websites and it just didn't work. So we're going to we're going to start a resource. Where we where we put relevant websites and we'll how would we do that? Would we put it on our website our page? We haven't figured that out yet. It'll be social media. It'll just be good. Trust us. Um, so, eighty percent of adults are on the internet. That's not surprising. Uh, Fifty percent of those people use a social networking site. That's pretty pretty large. And fifty percent of those people are over thirty five. So this demographic we were talking about is really beginning to adopt social media. And so um, the thing I want us to think a little bit about is not these numbers specifically, but the idea of where is our audience. And just for fun, uh, we have some numbers. There's an outfit called Quantcast. Anybody familiar with them? That'll be on our sheet. Quantcast is a place that just kind of gives you some statistics. Some of them are actually scrubbed empirical numbers. Some are. These aren't. But it gives you an idea of what's, who's using what. Now, um, although Facebook, how many of us are on Facebook, personally? Almost everybody. Um, although Facebook is being adopted more by, by other generations, it's still primarily used by teens. Now, you have to keep in mind, Facebook only opened up to the general public in 2007. And before that, you needed a university ID or you needed a high school ID. And think about the growth they we have someone who loves Facebook here, so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll tie into that in a second.
but primarily that's you know 30, um, 18 to 34. Now LinkedIn, on the other hand, is and I don't like this middle age thing. I think they, I'm going to I'm going to email them about that. I think season would be better. But the demographic is a little different. The majority of people there are are you know over 49 and above. So if the audience you're trying to reach and they're, they're very, most of them, you can see, it's very difficult to read, but college grads or graduate school, very well educated, uh, pretty affluent. So how many people are doing something with LinkedIn? Good. For, how many are using it for your organization? Okay, a couple. So these are, now I'm not saying that we use these numbers, and, and this is the only decision to make, but when you're doing strategy, you need data, and you need some data points. And so one of the things, as you're doing this, thinking, okay, where is our audience? Uh, Twitter, I find interesting. It's dropped a little bit, but Twitter used to be very much kind of Gen X, kind of in the middle. I don't know why, but uh, so keep that in mind. And then YouTube, I think everybody's, who, who watches YouTube videos? Almost everybody. But primarily, the, 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 the people using it are still a younger demographic. So this is a, a book that came out last year. I met this uh, I met this woman at an event, um, and what she's basically saying here is that there, these, the millennials or Gen Y, there are 70 million of them. They're very active. They're very active in social issues, and at the very least, they're the future. You know, of of, of the people who'll be working with you and of donors of everything. And so her conclusion is, you pretty much have to have some presence in this world if you want to work with. That demographic. Does everybody agree with that? Yeah. Okay. Now that doesn't mean you have to go overboard, but something. So if somebody comes, there's something there. Now, having said that, there are some people who don't do anything with social media. Do you know anybody who doesn't have Facebook or doesn't like my brother, for example, who's 16 years older than I, he and his wife are not on Facebook does nothing with this stuff. I think the same with my other brother. Now, they might be people you wanted to contact, but if you're looking for them on Facebook, you're not going to find them. Now, I've talked to people who like to get a letter in the mail. They like a brochure. They like a phone call. I used a rotary phone, just for the fact here. Um, and they actually like to meet with people. They like to, they like to sit down with people and, and to talk to them. Now, one of the things about the internet and social media is a lot of these companies don't want to talk to anybody. They don't want to meet with anybody. I'll tell you, I love LinkedIn. I have a story that is so hilarious. If we had time, I would share with you. Finally, at the end of this thing, I, I, they said to me that they have no person that could call me. Said, now, I love them, and, and you know, I, I don't know why that is. But have you ever noticed, you ever try to get a person in any of these social media sites? No. <laughs> We're not talking to you. We're an internet site. Well, guess what? Maybe a little bit of both. So my point is, if you need to reach an audience who is maybe you know used to getting this kind of communication, well, you got to keep doing it. But if you want to have any kind of interaction with some some of the other folks, that's where they're where you're going to find them. So that strategically is the message here. So what about? Uh, social media with nonprofits. Now, some of you probably have a lot better data than I do, and this is where I encourage you to jump in if you do. Um, this was from a very interesting report. It's on that little sheet, and it was done by a PhD from UMass, and it's of the top 200 charities. And some of you may have worked for one of these organizations. Their adoption of social media is unbelievable. Did you see it by your way? Facebook, 97%. Twitter, 96 92 Blogging. Uh, incredible. <laughs> and they found in this study, actually, that these charities are the most advanced users of social media of anybody, of educational institutions, of business. They use it more than anyone. Has anybody worked at a big organization that is very heavily into... Uh, I, think, I think they're getting incredible. Yes? I was with my parents I was 
That, that kind of surprised me, but so so the, the very large organizations have figured this out and have embraced it. Now this is really hard to read. I got this from Mashable. You know, some of these sites now, uh, some of the standard sites are offering all kinds of great stuff for nonprofits. I mean, it's amazing. Now, I was going to try and you know include all that. We don't really have time, so that's why we're going to create this resource. But you can get a lot of statistics. What this basically says, and you can't read it is that organizations that use social media tools increase their fundraising by 40% um, versus their peers. Now, I think this is from a, uh, a Black Broads, the Broads, the name of the, um, of the uh, Black Bod is the name of the organization. And they, um, they are a software company. So, you know, I, they might be, I don't know if these numbers are right or not. But um, the other one, uh, is that organizations that use social media uh, get that statistic, but the ones that don't, 50% aren't doing anything, and they're not really getting the kind of uh, results that, that they want. Blackbot, um, Do you bot, know? Blackbot and Convio, yeah. are, and they actually do all the math and work too. So if you look up Blackbot or Convio, C-O-N-V-I-O, they actually have the most data on anything related to and online fundraising. Some of it's public and some of it isn't, but it's really outstanding. Is it, is it, uh, it's good, and it's data that's accurate, so we can yeah. trust this data. Yeah. Good. And sometimes it gets, if, if you're not on, um, there are two daily news, blog, whatever, tactical philanthropy by Sean Stanton Stockton, he picks up a lot of that, and then the agitator by Roger Craver picks up a lot of it, he'll put out the reports on it. Really so we should take note of this. If you can email this to us, we'll put this in the resource page. Okay? Now this is, anybody have any more current uh, versions of this? This is from 2009, and it said that there was $300 billion that were raised because of, uh, uh, in general, for charitable work, and that $145 million of it was done online. I got a feeling that that number is really low. Anybody have anything more current than that? No? Okay. Now, having said all of these things about social media, wow, it's really cool. Let's not forget email. Does anybody do it in the email campaigns? Okay. So I received this yesterday from Patagonia. Patagonia, very socially responsible organization. And this was an email with a picture. And if you clicked on it, you went to here. And you got to um, see the information about this organization. I don't know, does anybody know these folks? Mm -hmm. But it's a partner organization. So let's look at some trends. Mobile computing. Mobile computing is really taken off. Everybody knows that. As I said, 50% of internet traffic is now on mobile sites. And we're saying now, uh, so anything you do, you have to do it for mobile. Cloud computing. Cloud computing is important because we no longer have to have the software on our computers anymore. All of these packages, basically all of these things, are in the cloud. Facebook, uh, Twitter, they're all cloud applications. Somebody liked Google Plus. Who was it that liked Google Plus? Okay. Here's your chance. We're going to actually have a discussion. But So are, are, how are you using it? I'm using it primarily to um, communicate with my closest group. Because on Facebook, it's kind of one for all. Are you seeing some potential for using them in your organization? I don't know if I thought about that. Okay. All right. Um, everything's apps. Does anybody have an app? That they, yeah? No, I mean an app for their organization. Oh. Yeah, tell us about it. No? Well, apps, I, there, there are billions of these things out there. And it's a great way to, to, rate, to reach your audience. Um, and as I mentioned before, these social media sites like Facebook, like YouTube, 
they're offering more and more resources to nonprofits. Have you noticed that? Um, there's some contests that YouTube's doing for the best video. Uh, so, so we're going to also include that in our, um, our list of resources. Uh, finally, uh, security privacy will become really important. Um, as those of us who care a little bit more about security start using this, uh, I think we're going to have to really be concerned about people's privacy. Because I'm really concerned about it. It's one of the things um, that concerns me about using Facebook is that I really, my son, he's, his, his statement is, hey, you know what? Everything I do, I assume they know what I'm doing. Uh, I don't know. I'm not quite comfortable. How many people are a little uncomfortable with some of them? Yeah. yeah. So that needs to be addressed. Now, by the way, um, when we look at some, and we'll look at the technical issues in a minute, you have to be really concerned about how you create these applications. For example, if you use Flash for your videos, what would it, what would a problem with that be? Because you run on iPods. Right. Or iPods, right? iPads. Well, iPods, I don't, I don't think it runs on iPods either. <laughs> so now we are going to have a discussion. And this being crowdsourced, we are going to look to the audience. Oh, are we on time? Yeah, we have 12 minutes. For our discussion? Yes. Beautiful. So we're going to open it up. And I know Celia's had some, you've had some experience with Facebook campaigns, right? Um, uh, <laughs> I didn't warn her. You didn't warn her? Oh, but <laughs> has anybody had any experience with Facebook campaigns? Yes. What'd you do? Uh, we were trying to, to raise awareness for our organization. Yeah. And so we went out and basically got started out with Facebook ads. Right. Facebook and then brought them to our website and had a special landing page connected with the ads and then hopefully drive them further in. It was it was very effective. It was very inexpensive. So what kind of result did you get? Uh well, I would you know, I I used to do marketing on the for profit side and if I got a two percent click through rate I was really right. happy. I got a 15% click through it. It was outrageous. I've only done it once. Wow. So I know. it was. It, but I think what it was, was it was the right time to do it. I run a, a, a water, safe drinking water nonprofit, right. and it was around World Water Day. Oh, that okay, week. okay. And so there was lots of So it was other, around an event. Right, okay. so there were lots of other people talking about it. And so I think I happened to take advantage of everybody else's now, did you did you get a lot of help doing that, or how did you set it up? I had one person who used to do database marketing for me in my prior life set the campaign up for me, and then that was me was it expensive? Or? No, it was it was we had a, we found some coupons, and um, the wow. Facebook was getting out, and so it cost me about two hundred dollars, and wow. we wound up getting I think it was. 400 new people signed up for our email list, which were, were we had 8,000 people all together, so that was huge. Excellent, excellent. So great. Any, any other examples? So if there are any more coupons, I'm <laughs> Yes. So, um, so I, I the, the social media work that we're doing with our organization right now is very much emerging. Yeah. Um, but in my previous organization. And um, I, I put together a social media strategy that was really pretty dependent on Facebook. Um, and the focus was working with enrollment representatives in, within the school to recruit new um, candidates into the program. And so I would work with, um, there would be like one enrollment representative responsible for a certain series of programs. And then I coach them on how to set up um, a Facebook page to kind of help recruit students into it. Um, being able to kind of respond to them really quickly, but also videos um, that were responding to some of the comments in the same page with a variety of kind of different tactics using Facebook. So rather than actually seeing it as a kind of one-off campaign, it was a sustainable um, long-term campaign. And it was pretty successful. What kind of, what kind of um, One of the programs, which was a little bit more technology-focused, um, I think that they built half of the students in that program through all that. Really? Yeah, that's fantastic. Anybody else? 
else? That's a really important point. Um, we really need people that know what they're doing in these things. Um, okay, so we've had some success with Facebook. I think one of the main examples Holly created the SV2. Everybody seen the SV2 website? Really great, isn't it? And, and she created that with a product uh, called Ning, which is actually a social network um, platform. And so, how'd you do it, and what are the advantages? And um, so, the advantages for us are that, I mean, we don't have this quote at the beginning of the presentation about your audience needs to be ready for the social media, right? So, we have all these great potentials for forums and blogs, and really easily uploaded video, and um, audio, and photo albums, and stuff, much like Facebook. It's Followers and stuff, and so um, we moved to it um, away from a more stats web page, knowing that we want to ramp up our audience to you know a few months ago before we launched it. There it is. Used to having any interaction on our website, right? But we're trying to launch people up to have more and more of our partners and grantees be following us and um, move to the point where we'll start having blogging and forums there. But it's very much you know like everything. Getting more and more to join. You're, you're going to use additional features as time goes on. Because, and, and so this is kind of a trend. How many of you are using your blog or as your website? Anybody? Then one of the questions that they asked Kelly at this event was, do you even need a website anymore? Because technology like Ning and WordPress allows you to really create very, very effect, effective um, sites that look like a website, but aren't. And what's the advantage of that? You can update it yourself. You don't need somebody who writes HTML to do it. And so, so yeah. Can I say something else about Ning? Because yeah. me and Holly, like our resident experts, I just wanted to do this before when they were sick. But I went to the website on my phone recently, which I hadn't done before. And I was fascinated to see that in the mobile version of the site, given that they do the social networks, it presents the site like a like a social network. So it presents the site like Facebook and like when you look at it on your phone in the mobile version, it says Joe's coming to the annual meeting, um, Lindsay put I always said you can like a master account, you know, Lindsay posted photos, so and so went to grant making. And that it's interesting to think about like for us, our audience, right, is we're going to be the community. And I was really struck sort of by accident. I don't think we knew that's what the mobile version was going to look like. It made it it made it made feel like this really vibrant kind of stuff that's happening. And people are joining and they're signing up. And I, you know, I want to join and I want to sign up. I just feel yeah. that. It's very interesting um, to think about that, that, that mobile functionality, which again, totally by accident. It 
wasn't strategic, but I think it, it's interesting to think about what vibe stuff like that gives the audience. Right, right. And so you may want to consider that because it's really hard to have a website and you have to have technical resources behind it. And, and so if you, if you look at it, um, and they have these upgraded versions that, that you buy. And I actually had, I don't really use it very much, but I had my website turned over to a work plus uh, the present block. And, uh, and you know, you don't have to get any programmers, but you do have to have it designed, you have to maintain it, but it may be, may be an option to look at. And I, and I think this is beautiful. When we saw this, this is gorgeous. Nobody would know that. Yes? I question on that, because if I'm, I think Jamil said it, you know, you get five stuff. Do you think it's a more dynamic website, as opposed to an information portal as such? Because um, I think it's just more dynamic content creation. Because of really, that's a very big, so you may not have the developers, you may not have the traditional way of editing, but you're going to have a very big team of content contributors. And again, you have to make sure they can write for an external audience. Well, I think um, this conversation is, um, I think, right on. I mean, I was having a conversation with a girlfriend of mine who's worked for several different startups, and she said they currently have a website, and if she were to do it again, which she's consulting with one organization, they wouldn't even build a website. They'd use right. um, Facebook, they'd use Tumblr, they'd use Springboard. Yeah. Tumblr, yeah. Those are kind of like the Anybody three. using Tumblr? My daughter uses Tumblr. Yeah. And so I think with the younger generation, there are the benefit with these applications or these sites are the, the ability to interact. And what happens is you don't have to have such a huge staff, but you create a community. And within that community, you start to get the dialogue and, and people that just are passionate about what you're doing, how you're doing it, and they create the dialogue. And they create the community. Um, but that does lead to security, privacy, on message. Uh, so, you know, benefits and problems. You have those issues if you have a website right. or not. I think, I think the, the, the main benefit is it's not static. You right. control it. That's right. You don't necessarily have to add any more content. Because to all intents and purposes, this looks like a website, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. um, but it gives you a lot more flexibility and, and controlling it yourself. And so I... I think this is a trend you may want to look into. Um, so I don't think the cost savings would be huge. Oh, now absolutely. You're, now you can spend all that money on the content as opposed to maintaining infrastructure. Right. That's right. right. And did you ever did you ever um, want to put something on your website, but you thought, oh, I've got to get it to the web person, and I'm like, ah, just not going to bother. In this case, mm -hmm. you can actually do it yourself, and that's the point. And it's very expensive yes. to drive traffic to websites. That's, I right. think, a big thing, a big challenge for especially nonprofits. Is it's very expensive, and once you get there, <coughs> then what? You want them to stay. You, want right. to, right. you need a vehicle that can continue to push and communicate and to create dialogue and right. engage. If you can yeah. do that, then you can. Yeah, the most important element of social media to really keep people engaged is to keep relevant content always on there, something new. Something exciting. So when they come back, they say, "Wow, I want to keep coming back here. I'm learning. I'm learning about the events." And and it's harder to do that with a website. Does anybody else have a comment? Yes. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Um, I have a question about your list. Was developing an app? Can you yeah. just say? I think I can go talk back. Talk a little bit about that. What would an organization create an app? What would they have to do? Well, what would they put in it? Why would you want to do that? You know, what's it well, um, so for example, you've done it. No, I haven't done it, but I was going to say I use the Monterey Bay Aquarium as a yeah, safe super app. app. So <laughs> it's right on point with their mission and what yeah. they're doing, but it's something that I use regularly. So that you can see what. Oh, that's, any other? Yeah. Well, yeah, we launched one with Organic Spa Magazine, which yeah. was a great little travel tool wherever you are. You a very sustainably driven lodging. Any others? This is great. Yeah. Because I, I really didn't. To give some examples. I didn't really have a good example. So that's wonderful. I love crowdsourcing. Yeah, I don't have an example for nonprofit, but I was really struck by skiing at Mammoth, and they have an app for Mammoth Mountain because it's current content. You can find out a lifts are closed, they're running ticket specials, is there a restaurant running specials on the mountain, that kind of thing. Do, do we have any app developers in here? 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to make a little bit better. It is good. Here's the book. All right. Let's get the book back. Um, Here we go, Danny. Danny. <laughs> Danny. 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 We'll give them another one. It's, they're more where that came from, but it'll be electronic. Uh, we, I, I formed a little app company with some folks that I used to work with, a uh, programmer and a, the CEO of a company. And our claim to fame was we had the oldest average age of any app company. In <laughs> that's, and that's our only claim to fame. <laughs> we had a heck of a time doing apps, and so I guess my only... Uh, advice is get somebody that's done one and knows how to do it, because because they look easy. Uh, but we didn't find it as easy as as, uh, as some some do. Um, and the last thing I think we want to say: How are we doing on time? We're out. We're out. Okay, we're out. Well, uh, just a little bit about LinkedIn. Why I use LinkedIn? Because for me, I, I really don't work with that many clients. I only have a few. And I'm really not trying to, you know, get a get, get a message out to a million people. But this is an effective tool for me. I um, I use it for contacts. If I need someone, we connect on LinkedIn. I follow companies on LinkedIn. There's some questions. There's some organizations like strategy organizations that I find very beneficial, and they they push things out to me. If I wanted to, I could comment on this stuff. I really don't do that. But a lot of people establish their expertise. And, and more, and they're getting a little bit better with, with nonprofits. And so your uh, SV2 is on, on uh, LinkedIn. I don't know how much we're doing, but you could start a conversation with him. And to give you a success story, that guy Kelly, that I interrupted his seminar to ask the question, I offered him an, uh, to, to connect on LinkedIn yesterday, and he accepted it. So there's a success story. And <laughs> now the, the final thing I'll say about LinkedIn is that Remember in the CRM days, and CRM systems are great, but Joyce had to keep people's data input. I love this because they input, they, they, they update their own data. Mm -hmm. So, you know, oh, you have a new job, great. Oh, you know. So, so that, it's really a dynamic um, environment, and I think LinkedIn is going to offer tremendous potential. I think we're only seeing the beginning of what LinkedIn can do. But, yes? And LinkedIn has a weekly profit. <coughs> yes. Yeah, that's right. I get it. Yes. And, and by the way, if anybody, you know, there's a lot more. These, these, these major sites are doing a lot more for nonprofits, and I can't, no one can keep track of all of these. So if we created like a crowdsource document that people could contribute to, that'd be wonderful. Okay, well, I guess we're done with this part. Anything else? Okay, Holly's giving me the sign. That... Now to the workshop phase. This is where I stop talking, and you guys can have a little bit of fun. Um, so we took those questions, the who, why, what, and we tried to elaborate a little more. And we came up with something. Um, so, so the first one is, what are your objectives for social media? Why do you want to do this in the first place? Now, you may find you don't have any, and then you get to leave early and enjoy the nice day. <laughs> um, the next is, how do these objectives fit into your strategy? Because if they don't, they should. If you have an overall marketing strategy and this isn't part of it or it doesn't fit, that doesn't make sense. Um, who's your audience? Who are you trying to reach? It could be multiple audiences. It could be a, a community of people you're trying to engage, and it also could be donors. Who? Uh, so, so that's what makes it complex. Today we're going to just try and focus on one audience. Uh, the message you want to deliver. Um, so what do you want to say to them? What kind of action do you want? Do you want them to sign up? Do you want them to be donors? What do you want? What message do you want to deliver, and for what action? Now, what platforms are appropriate? Only when you've done those other things can you now look at the platforms that make sense. When you know who you want to reach and what you want to say, then you can pick the appropriate platform. Um, we'll. Uh, oh, this is important. So now you've got. Wow, we want to be on Facebook, and we know what we want to say. And who's going to do it? This is probably the most difficult because you have to design the site has to look good, right? You have to have your logo on there. You have to have somebody that represents your organization, the voice of your organization, because you're going to have to uh, have, have interactions with people. So you want somebody that understands enough about what you're doing to be able to interact. You're going to have to have content that's always updated and, and put on, on the site. Um, you're going to have to monitor it for inappropriate 
Anybody on any of their sites ever had anything inappropriate put on there? Yep. So somebody's got to watch that, monitor it. Um, that's on kind of the content side. If you look on the technical side, you have to make sure that you can have great videos that are done, um, that the things you put on your blog are kind of in, you know, they're in English and that they're accessible. Um, any kind of technical issues, any kind of privacy issues, any kind of hosting issues, all of these things are really critical. As we talked about with video, you got to make sure the video that you're using is going to run on all these various platforms. And so what we, what we did was we took this, um, these questions and we tried to put them on this strategy map, which is this, I think we're going to pass these out. We're going to pass these out because we're going to be working with them. Yeah.